What is that, Andy? I'm, I'm reading the rules. Light reading over yeah, Read the first name. You, uh, you should read the rules too. RTFM. He reprints the whole thing yeah. and <laughs> reads it cover to cover. All right, so team update four. They uh, for playoffs they flipped the uh, alliance stations, so it's unsymmetrical like the field. Now the second pick can not defend against the boiler as easy on both alliances instead of just one. So it's it's fairer now. They also reminded us that the touchpad has a davit that sticks below the, uh, the touch plate, which does not move up. So you're gonna have to have something to the right or left of where the cable comes up to actually push on it. It's a finger. That's, that's yep. all you need. I'm pretty easy. You can figure it out. There's another update about what else is oh the neverest motor is now included in the rules three weeks where it was nebulous that was the important stuff would you suggest that uh teams read the first manual and look at team updates i would suggest that teams read the first manual it's just a binder or there's electronic versions for you wow there was one page that really stood out to me oh that was g4 and r3 huh are you alluding to the anti mark contest Check out the contest that we have. Um, and there's already some pretty good entries out there. Uh, the Robot in Three Days entry, I'm not sure what that song was. I guess it has to do with robots and how big they are and such. The nine inch spring, it's the extension spring. They're hard to get, so we actually have those. AM3557. On the, on the product page, you web guys might not know this, but I just posted some pictures on there just like a half an hour ago that shows the difference of the McMaster spring, how it deflects down and how the anti-mark spring deflects down less. So the anti-mark spring is stronger than the McMaster spring as you surmised on Saturday or Friday. The guys that made our spring for us really had a hard time making the pole string the exact same as what McMaster car says. So they got it as close as they could and it's stronger than the McMaster car spring. That's, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Does so the I, difference matter? I would think that we probably shouldn't design something to be exactly the same spring height every time. It's going to be moving around. Especially with the thing that you can move it up and down so it doesn't go all the way down for yeah, whatever reason. Right, the human right. player doesn't notice. Because it's kind of springy. Yeah. Whoa. Get yours now at andymark.com slash spring. 217 left. Five. Hopefully spring they're still there when this video out. comes out. If they're not, <laughs> sorry. We'll, we'll get some more. We didn't know how much Jerry, what do you have to say about FTA training? The, the field has a whole lot of LEDs on it, which are really cool. There's a lot of stuff going everywhere. I like how much the detail they went into as far as into the storyline. So like in the boiler, you throw in fuel into the boiler and at the end of the match when the, the airship's taking off, it doesn't matter whatever fuel's there, you've already left, you've, you've disconnected. You can't put more fuel when you're disconnected. So that stops, which I think is cool. They even went through the thought process of like the, the main propeller being the first one. So you, you may, you're still taking off the end of the match either way. Otherwise it would look a little funny having one team not taking off. So yeah, I, I, I like that they went more into the storyline than what they usually do. I like that it's all automated this year. There are no ref scoring. There's no human element of the score. Everything, when the match ends, that's that's what your score is. There isn't waiting on somebody to make a judgment call or a decision on what happened. It's, it's whatever you see is what you get. Since we're all talking about field parts, my favorite subtle detail of the field is the fact that the steam pipe both fits into the storyline and also is a perfect place to hide the ethernet and power connection to the airship. Mm -hmm. That's really well thought out. Liz, back to you. I really like the, uh, like Bravo was saying, the automated scoring, and there are some really cool sensors that I think Rockwell Automation did this year. It's pretty neat, uh, especially the way that the, the gears are sensed. I thought that was neat. That you actually, yeah, you need to do three full rotations of that gear on the airship to make sure that your rotor starts spinning. Okay, so one thing that popped up that's kind of a hot issue is the magnetic encoder from Crossroad Electronics, the SRX encoder. In order to put it into your old Animark gearboxes, check out their user guide. Page 10 starts with how you alter your old shafts to put a new magnet into the shaft in order to get this encoder to, to work right. We are transitioning our shafts to have magnets 
in the shafts for this encoder, and they also will be able to be used on the US Digital encoders that we've used for years. Some of our new shafts have this magnet in them already, but we're transitioning incrementally throughout our product line. Because of that, um, if you're using the, the CTRE encoder with the shaft with all the magnet in, don't try to press the magnet in any further than that. It's designed to be that distance for the um, other encoder, but um, you will need to space that coder out from the back of the gearbox either both of you using the plastic housing or the metal housing in order to get that magnet placement correct for reading with the CTR um, encoder. And so we're, we're coming out with a small hardware kit to include spacers that will space that out the correct distance for reading. Uh, we just uh, we'll, we should have that up on our website sometime soon. Next couple days. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have an update on that on Wednesday. So have fun this week with your robot teams. Um, we'll see you on Wednesday. Have fun, read the manual, enter our contest, and read the manual a lot. Read it every night before bed, just like as a bedtime story. Bedtime story. Yeah. Can we get? Can we get? I, that's you? what I do. Don't you read it every night before? Can bed? we make an audiobook of the manual read by Andy Baker? That's oh my god, yes. Yeah. Chapter People one. would listen to that. Chapter who don't one. read the manual. The arena. <laughs> I just imagine though, like she gets to a certain oh role, it's like, god. why is this a rule? Why is this even here? Why, <laughs> no, that's, why are we that's, doing this? that's track two. Yeah. <laughs>